Hi poetry lovers, welcome to my channel Bella Poetry. My name is Bella and I love beautiful poetry. In the 10th segment of our series Victorian Female Poets of the 19th Century, we will discuss the life and the poetry of another wonderful uh, British poet and writer, a very prolific writer, Edith Nesbitt. Edith Nesbitt was born in 1858 in London. Her father, John, was an agricultural chemist and uh, her mother's name was Sarah Green. And unfortunately, four years after Edith was born, uh, John uh, passed away. It was in 1862. And that left Edith, her mother, Sarah, and her older sister, Mary. Unfortunately, Mary was a sickly child and the family had to move a lot. They were <clears throat> maybe in a search for better treatments, but they traveled all the time to France, to Spain, and to Germany. In 1871, Mary got engaged to a poet, Philip, Philip Marston, but unfortunately, soon after, she passed away from tuberculosis. And so the two women, Edith Nesbitt and her mother, Sarah, decided to return to England and they settled in southeast London. When Edith Nesbitt turned 17 years old, she met, um, uh, 18 years old in 1877, she met a man whose name was Hubert Bland, and uh, they started dating. She had no idea that Hubert uh, got uh, somebody, his ex fiance pregnant at the same time, and uh, she was dating him for three years until he made Edith Nesbitt's pregnant as well. And when she was seven months pregnant, they decided to get married. So they got married in 1880. And in the summer of the same year, Edith uh, had her first child, whose name was Paul. In 1884, the couple joined Fabian Society and they edited the journal Today. A woman by the name of Alice uh, Hodson was the assistant secretary and she became Edith's best friend. She spent many evenings with Edith while her husband was uh, walking, going around uh, London philandering and uh, he was uh, an attractive man, very tall and women found him. Uh, he was very popular with women and he didn't waste his charms. Uh, at all. And so Edith had to spend many evenings by herself. And suddenly Alice Holson, who was her best fr friend, moved in with them. They said that Alice was sick and they had to help her. But in fact, Alice was heavily pregnant and Hubert Bland was, not surprisingly, a father of her child, of her uh, daughter who was born later, whose name was Rosamond. And uh, obviously, when Edith found out, she also found out, by the way, that Hubert was seeing his ex fiance who had no idea about the existent, existence of Edith. So she was extremely upset with her husband. They had a terrible fight. And Edith demanded that he threw uh, Alice, her best friend, that was a double betrayal, threw Alice and her child out. But Hubert refused and he said that if that happens, he would leave Edith and her son, Paul, and their son, Paul. So Edith decided that she's going to adopt a child. She adopted the girl and Alice lived with, it, with them. So this menage a trois, people say that maybe they were kind of involved with each other, but I think it's not true. It basically was a collaboration at the end between two women. Probably it took them time, it took them time to make up uh, and talk again, but when they did, they helped each other. Alice became their housekeeper. She kept the house, she cooked the meals, and Edith actually was almost the only, um, she was the only one who earned money for the family. 
She wrote and decorated greeting cards, and she was very prolific in writing. And Alice actually was the one when she had、um, a stillbirth, when she gave birth to a stillborn child. Alice was the one who pried the child out of her hands and helped her when she was in terrible grief. After that incident, Edith kind of threw herself into her work and became very prolific, writing novels and children books and poetry. So,、uh, by the way, 13 years later. Alice becomes pregnant again with Hubert Child,、uh, whose name was John, and、uh, Edith again adopts him. So、uh, it was really strange relationship, but it kind of worked for all three of them.、Uh, Blend, by the way, as I said before, was very bad with money, so Edith supported the whole household. She was also a prolific lecturer. And、uh, writer on socialism, she was a committed socialist. She wore this. She was very attractive, very charming. She wore this free-flowing clothes. She allowed her children to play barefoot in the garden. So kind of a hippie. And also in her house, because she was、uh, so popular with writers and members of the Fabian Society. She entertained a lot, a lot of young poets and writers, and everybody loved coming to her house. But in 1914, her husband Hubert died at the age of 59. So Edith Nesbitt was 56 years old.、Um, three years later, on February 20th, 1917. Edith marries a man who is a total opposite of her husband, but who definitely treated her much better. His name was Thomas the Skipper because he was the captain of the Woolwich Ferry, and so she lives with him, and they're quite happy.、Um, Edith Nesbitt passed away in 1924、uh, at the age of 66. From lung cancer because she was a very heavy smoker, and、uh, as far as her works go, she started、uh, her career by writing poetry, and she continued writing poetry. In 1878, at the age of 20, she published her poem "Under the Tree" in a magazine, Good Works. In all, she published 60 books for children. And she also published many books jointly with other writers. Her biographer Julia Briggs calls her the first modern writer for children and the inventor of adventure stories. So her best-known books are *The Story of the Treasure Seekers*, that was published in 1899, and *The Would Be Goods*, which was published in 1901. She also wrote eleven novels, eleven sixty books for children, eleven novels for adults,、uh, short stories, and four collections of horror stories, and obviously poetry. Very talented woman, very prolific, that had an interesting life. I like to quote、um, these amazing women because quotes also say a lot about. The way they think and about their lives. So the first quote is quite progressive for those times. Girls are just as clever as boys, and don't you forget it. She definitely was. And the second quote is also from the book The Railroad Children, and it says, "Don't ask me no questions, and I won't tell you no lies." So, and now I'll read to you two poems by Edith Nesbitt, and you can tell by reading this poetry how much disappointment she felt towards her husband, although she loved him very much. The first poem is called "The Kiss." The snow is white on wood and wold. The wind is in the firs. So dead my heart is with the cold. No pulse within it stirs. Even to see your face, my dear, 
your face that was my son. There is no spring this bitter year, and summer's dreams are done. The snakes that lie about my heart are in their wintry sleep. Their fangs no more deal sting and smart, no more they curl and creep. Laugh with the summer cease to be. The frost is firm and fast. God keep the summer far from me and let the snake sleep last. Touch of your hand could not suffice to waken them once more. No could the sunshine of your eyes a ruined spring restore. But ah, your lips, you know the rest, the snows are summer rain. My eyes are wet, and in my breast the snake snake's fangs meet again. A beautiful poem. And the second poem is called Autumn Song. Will you not walk the woods with me? The shafts of sunlight burn on many golden crested tree and many a russet fern. The summer's robe is dyed anew and autumn's well veil of mist is gemmed with little pearls of dew where first we met and kissed. I will not walk the woodlands brown where ghosts and mists, uh, and mists are blown, but I will walk the lonely down, and I will walk alone, where night spreads out her mighty wing, and dead days keep their thrist. There, there will I weep the woods of spring, where first we met and kissed. This poem brings us to the end of this segment. I hope you enjoyed listening to the life story and to poetry of Edith Nesbitt. Uh, please visit Bella Poetry again. Next week, we'll discuss the scandalous life of Lady Lamb. Uh, don't forget to like if you like the segment and to subscribe. Subscribing is absolutely free, but it will bring to you other segments of Bella Poetry. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.